Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the inverse function property to show that the two functions are inverses of each other. So before we do any computation, let's, let's write down what is the inverse function property. So first, given any two function f and g, so you have some function f and some function g, so here's what you want to do. One, you want to show that the composition f circle g of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of g. And you also want to show that the composition in the reverse direction, which will be g circle f of x, is also equal to x for all x in the domain of f of x. Once this composition results in x, then we can say that two functions f and g are inverses of each other. There's another way to do it. You can also compute the inverse formula, which we will do for one example, but the key idea is to know how to do these compositions and then at the end if you get the result x then we claim the two functions are inverses of each other okay so having said that let's take a look at our first example so here i have two functions f and g and we want to show that they're inverses of each other so first we're going to show by doing the composition so we're going to show that when we do f circle g of x, which means this is f of g of x, we get the result x. And then second, we're going to show the composition in the reverse direction, which is g circle f of x, meaning g of f of x will also give us x. If these two statements are true, then we'll claim f and g are inverses of each other. So let's do the first one. So we're doing f of g of x. So what that means is that you take the function g, which is x over 5, and plug it into f. So f is going to do 5 times x. Well, in this case, x is going to be So in this case, g of x is the function x over 5. So we plug in x over 5 into f of x. And then we simplify this, so this would give us 5 times x over 5, and then the 5 cancels out, so we get x. Great, so the first composition is true. Now let's do the second composition. So now we're going to test g of f of x, so that would be g of f of x. So we take the function f of x, which is now 5x, and we plug that into g. Well, g is going to do x over 5, well now we're going to replace x with the function uh, f of x, so we have 5 times x. So that's how the setup would look like, and now we go ahead and simplify this. So here again I can remove the parentheses, so I have 5x over 5, again the 5 cancels out, we have x. So both of these compositions give us x, which means that we can say f and g are inverses of each other. So this is one way to do it. Now another way to do it is to show that if you really compute the inverse formula, you get the other formula. So for instance, so if I compute the inverse formula for f, I should get the function g because they're inverses of each other. So let's, let's do that. So if you remember, f of x is equal to 5x, and we want to find what is f inverse of x. And we're claiming that should be the function g of x, because they're inverses of each other. So let's compute the formula. So to find the inverse formula, we're going to write f of x is y. So we have y is equal to 5x, and then we interchange x and y. So we have x is equal to 5y. And then we solve for y, so we divide both sides by 5. Hence, we have y is equal to 
x over 5. And if you look at the question we had, g of x is x over 5. So hence, we have our inverse function is equal to x over 5, which was the function g of x. So check. So here's the second example. Again, for this one, we're not going to compute the inverse formula. Instead, we're just going to use the property to show their inverses of each other. So let's show. So first, we want to do f of g of x. And we sh we're hoping we'll get x as a result. And then we're going to show that g of f of x will also give us x. And then we'll claim their inverses of each other. So let's do the composition for the first one. We're doing f of g of x. So we take the function g and we're going to plug it into f. So f is going to do 9 minus 4 times x. Well, x will be replaced with g. So g is the function 9 minus x over 4. So now we go ahead and simplify this. So we have 9 minus, and here you can see that the 4 and the 4 from the denominator, these will cancel out. So what we're left with is we have a negative 1, you can think of it that way, and 9 minus x. And now I can go ahead and distribute the negative 1. So that gives me 9 minus 9 plus x. And then we see that the 9 and negative 9 cancels out. We get x. So this composition is good. We have x. Now let's check the other direction. So now here we take g of x and g of f of x. So we take f and we plug it into g. So f is given as 9 minus 4x and we're going to plug that into g. So g is going to do 9 minus x all over 4. Well, x is going to be f of x. So we, we put f of x in there. So that would be 9 minus 4x. And then the rest is simplifying algebraically. So we go ahead and distribute this negative 1 and simplify. So we have 9 minus 9 plus 4x all over 4. And by doing further simplification, you see that the 9 and negative 9 cancels out. So we have 4x over 4. And doing further simplification, the 4s will cancel out. So we have x. Check. So both compositions hold. So we say f and g are inverses of each other by doing inverse function property. OK, now let's do another example. So here's our last example for this concept. I have two functions, f and g. And we want to show these functions are inverses of each other. So again, we'll do the same thing. We're going to show composition in two directions. So we want to show when we compose f of g of x, what do we get? And then we'll do g of f of x. So let's plug it in. So we take the function g and we're going to plug it into f. So f is going to do x minus 1 over 3 plus 2 times x. So I'm leaving x blank because I'm going to replace that with g. And g happens to be 3x plus 1 over 1 minus 2x. So everywhere there is x, I'm going to replace it with g. 3x plus 1 over 1 minus 2x. So this one you want to do it super carefully because it's going to be a lot of work. So don't want to mess it up. So that's the expression we want to simplify. And after everything, we are hoping that we will have x at the end. So let's get busy. So I can actually freely remove these parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. So first on top, we have 3x plus 1 over 1 minus 2x minus 1. And on the bottom, I have 3 plus. Now I'm going to distribute the 2 so I can remove the parentheses. So I have 6x plus 2 over 1 minus 2x. So that's what we get after removing those parentheses. Well, now 
you want to use common denominators to combine these into a single fraction. So let's focus on top. I want to combine 3 plus 3x plus 1 over 1 minus 2x with the negative 1. So I rewrite 1 as a fraction and then multiply by its LCD, which would be 1 minus 2x over 1 minus 2x. And then I do the same thing on the bottom. I write 3 as a fraction and then multiply by its LCD, which is 1 minus 2x. So we have 1 minus 2x top and bottom. So that will allow us to join each individual fraction into a single fraction on top and bottom. So what is this going to clear out to? So we have the following. So on top we have 3x plus 1. And here I'm going to distribute the negative 1 on top. So I have negative 1 plus 2x all over the common denominator 1 minus 2x all over. Now let's focus on the bottom terms. So I multiply 3 with 1 and negative 2x. So I have 3 minus 6x plus 6x plus 2 all over 1 minus 2x. And now here I can change the division to multiplication and flip the bottom fraction and I can combine like terms as I go along. So for the top I can combine 3x and 2x, that's 5x, and 1 and negative 1, they will cancel out. So you have that over 1 minus 2x times, and I reciprocate the bottom fraction, so I have 1 minus 2x goes on top, and on the bottom I'm going to combine them, 3 and 2, that's 5, and negative 6x and 6x cancel out. Okay, and now here, these will also freely cancel out, so we have 5x over 5. And here we can cancel out the 5s. So we have x as we want it. Check. So if I do composition in this direction, we get x. Now let's do the other direction where we do g circle f. So, so let's check that out. So now we're going to do g of f of x and we're hoping it will also give us x. So now we take f of x and we're plugging it into g. Well what is g going to do? g is going to do 3 times x plus 1 over 1 minus 2 times x. That's what g is going to do. Well the input for g is going to be f so we're going to plug in x minus 1 over um, 3 plus 2x and then x minus 1 over 3 plus 2x. So that's how it looks like g compose f. And now we'll do the same thing, combine like terms and then put them in common denominators and cancel out like terms. So again, I'm going to write, I'm going to go ahead and distribute 3 on top. And then here I'm going to distribute negative 2 on top so I can get rid of those parentheses. So we have 3x minus 3 over 3 plus 2x plus 1 still out there. And then on the bottom we have 1 minus. Um, so let's just uh, distribute 2 instead of the negative. So I'll keep the negative with outside. So we have 2x and then um, minus 2 all over 3 plus 2x. And now I'm going to put the top into a single fraction and the bottom into a single fraction. So we're going to need LCD. So we're going to write 1 as 1 over 1 and multiply by 3 plus 2x over 3 plus 2x because that is our LCD on top. And on the bottom we're also going to write 1 as a fraction and then multiply by the LCD which is again 3 plus 2x over 3 plus 3 plus 2x. Right, we want to do this very carefully. Okay, so now that we have done that, now let's join them into single fraction on top and bottom. So we have on top as follows. So we have 3x minus 3 
plus 3 plus 2x all over the LCD, 3 plus 2x, everything over. Now the bottom, we combine them into a single fraction. So we have 3 plus 2x, and now here I'm going to distribute the negative 1. So I have minus 2x plus 2 all over um, 3 plus 2x. And now we can combine like terms. So we, uh, we can combine 3x and 2x, that's 5x, and then the 3 and negative 3, they cancel out all over the denominator, 3 plus 2x, all over. And now on the bottom, looks like the 2x and negative 2x cancels out. So we have 3 plus 2, that's 5, over 3 plus 2x. And here we can do the reciprocal of the bottom fraction and multiply. multiply. Uh, so we have 5x over 3 plus 2x times 3 plus 2x over 5. And again, these are like terms, so they cancel out. So we're left with 5x over 5, which is again simplifies to just x. Check. So you see how doing the composition in both direction, our end result gives us x. So that was the idea. So we can now say that because both direction gave us x, we can say f and g are inverses of each other. So that will be the conclusion you will draw. All right, so I, I hope the idea of inverse property makes sense.